Uh, can you all hear me? Okay. So we will do this in uh, English and Cantonese. I also speak English, but I speak Cantonese. But I'm listening to the Cantonese into English uh, uh, translated. Um, I am uh, Zuhair Abdul Karim, uh, former Asia editor of Time. Uh, we, uh, our topic today is uh, from struggle to more struggle, maybe. <laughs> Uh, uh, the transition for Hong Kong media, and we've got a terrific uh, uh, panel. But before that, before I introduce uh, the panel members, I just want to say a few things. Why should we be so concerned about media in Hong Kong? Media uh, anywhere, a free and pro free and professional media is a pillar of an informed and aware society. Uh, you think about good governance, you think about an independent judiciary, you think about an active civil society, and media falls into that category. Uh, it's not just about politics. Uh, if you want to know whether there's lead in your water, a free and professional media, free and professional media can, can tell you that. If you want to know um, uh, whether the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is safe to drive on, uh, uh, that can help too. Uh, 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 it doesn't have to be uh, about politics, although it also helps to keep the government accountable. If you want to know whether your tax dollars are being used efficiently uh, and wisely, or it just might simply be that you want to know whether this movie is worth spending a hundred bucks on. Okay, so. This is, I think, the importance of uh, uh, free and professional uh, uh, media. You notice that I'm not using the word independent media, because that's a bit of a dirty word in Hong Kong right now. Um, um, so we have a great panel uh, to talk about this. Um, uh, we have two finalists from the Wing Awards. Uh, the exhibition for that is in the main gallery. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, I would recommend. Uh, that you go through it. Uh, it's very sharp and edgy. Uh, to my immediate right is uh, finalist Billy Kwok. Uh, uh, his uh, photographic uh, work and installation is on uh, Hong Kong after the handover. Uh, uh, in the middle is Chan Suk On, whose work is ink, di ink Dips on Petals, and we'll be showing both on the screen a little later. Billy is, a, uh, is an independent photographer a uh, photojournalist, uh, has, has been in the business for quite a number of years, and he loves to combine photography and give it a sort of a bit more of an artistic sensibility. And that's the same with uh, Chan Suk On. Her, uh, her start was in um, photography. She's now a newspaper uh, uh, editor. Then we have Long Ging Cheng, um, who is really a, uh, a very experienced journalist, has been in the business since 1979, that's longer than me. Um, um, and he was uh, most recently uh, editor-in-chief of general manager and general manager of HK01, which uh, some of you may be f uh, familiar with. And he is now starting uh, a new magazine called Being Hong Kong. Being Hong Kong. Zhao Hai Hong Kong. Zhao Hai Hong Kong. Uh, um, and uh, 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 next to Casey is Keith Richburg. Keith Richburg is a uh, distinguished foreign correspondent. Uh, most of his career with the Washington Post in all sorts of places, in all kinds of situations. Hong Kong, China, Africa, Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, New York City. And he is now back in Hong Kong. He is head of the Journalism and Media St Studies Center at uh, uh, the University of Hong Kong. Okay, um, so the first thing I want to address is how Hong Kong media has changed in terms of its complexion. Is it uh, uh, is the ownership of Hong Kong media more diverse now or less diverse? Uh, 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 is it sort of slanted a certain way or not? Uh, um, uh, Casey was telling me earlier that uh, basically it's always been uh, sort of rightist media, leftist media, and centrist. Uh, and has that 
changed, uh, especially in the years after 1997? Casey, what do you say? Um, 其實我入行的時候,1979年 我看見這個題目就是什麼呢? 一開始一數,at 入到去,其實大家的立場是很不同的一些定位 而那時大部分的台灣,大部分的媒體其實都是從台灣而稱為中立的 也有明報的報紙,很多時候也是一些家族式的報紙 即是內容或者編輯的方針 那個所謂集中或者將多元化、多媒體的多報紙的情況改變,其實不是只是在九七年之後。陳志光,you <笑><笑> You went from being a photographer and you're a newspaper editor now. Uh, in many ways, the, uh, the health of the newspaper industry is not very good. Why did you make the move that you did? Actually, <laughs> 開始有點累 
因為多咗一個網媒啦。咁、呃、其實姊妹要做埋網媒，即係要做埋即時啦，同時又要做誒、呃、報紙嘅出版啦。咁其實做一個攝影記者要做兩樣工作嘅，就、呃、通常都係又要拍拍嘢啦，又要錄影啦，又要做埋影相。所以、呃、越做就開始越辛苦。咁、呃、因為、呃、你兩樣要同時兼顧，其實唔容易噶。即係有時你影到相嘅時候，可能拍唔到片；有時拍到片嘅時候，可能影唔到相嘅。咁、呃、做編輯嘅角色咧，就反而係、呃、即係、呃、去、呃呃、去睇一睇點樣安排啲相啊嘅版面啊，或者係起條題啊，即係做咗一個比較主導嘅角色。有時、呃、做攝影記者可能都會揀咗誒幾張相，然之後俾誒、呃、圖片編輯啊，再俾編誒誒、呃呃、編輯組嗰邊再揀相，即係嗰個主導性其實冇咁大嘅。編輯就可以嗰、那個嗰、那個主導權可能可誒、呃、可以大啲咯，好似。Do you agree, Billy？ 我覺得誒。Do you, is, is, do you agree that the photographers don't have that much control? Or there's more of a back and uh, uh, back and forth, you know, engagement with the editor. And do you find that there are sufficient outlets for your work uh, uh, still these days? I think this is a very big difference. Like in Hong Kong, the media may have this problem. But my experience is that since I started out, I started out as a photographer or a photographer or a photographer. 咁我未曾經喺一個誒、呃、媒體個體制入面經歷過，作為誒、呃、一間報館屬下嘅嘅攝影記者，究竟佢哋個分工係點，或者佢哋個溝通係點？但係對於我嚟講咧，誒係係溝通比較多嘅。可能呢個咧亦都係外國媒體同香港媒體有少少分別嘅地方啦。我哋出去影完相，我哋會誒。呃揀或者深水已經有啲相揀咗出嚟，然後再同圖片編輯去溝通。有時可能佢覺得唔夠，即係圖片編輯覺得唔夠嘅時候咧，佢再問你：你有冇更加多嘅相？一齊會係討論啦。咁有啲圖片編輯甚至乎會喺你出去 assignment 之前咧，已經會同你傾好啊，大概想要啲咩咧，或者係有啲咩方向想你去跟咧。咁呢個就係、是呃、有少少唔同嘅地方。Keith, you were the Washington Post before the uh, era of, of Jeff Bezos. How has uh, uh, the corporate changes at the Washington Post impacted on its uh, coverage? Is it better? Is it worse? Um, is it the same? Uh, uh, and how does that fit in uh, with the overall environment regarding media and media coverage and ad public attitudes towards the media? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, and start, pardon me for not speaking Cantonese well enough. To, <laughs> but uh, the the uh, the Washington Post uh, was bought by Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, uh, in 2013, um, end of 2013. So I actually left at the beginning of 2013. And one of the reasons that I left was because the paper had been changing from the paper that I had grown up in. I, I started working there as a as an intern. Um, a cadet right out of right out well when I was still in university before I graduated and continued on there for the next uh, 34 years of my career uh, you know uh, in the final I'd say 10 years or so the Washington Post basically was uh, was losing money it was losing about 10 million dollars every year 10 million US dollars every year um, Don Graham the Graham family that owned the Washington Post they're a fairly wealthy family um, but they're not that wealthy. <laughs> $10 million a year, you know, over the course of 10 years, that's $100 million. <laughs> that's a lot of money. Um, but Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, uh, last I checked, he was worth something like $10 billion, billion with a B, U.S. dollars. Um, so he could afford to lose what, $10 million a year for the next 10 or 20 years, and that wouldn't really impact his net worth very much. <laughs> so the real difference is that uh, for when I left the Washington Post, they were actually cutting... Uh, reducing the size of their staff, reducing the size of the bureaus. Um, I was there when the paper was over a thousand, one thousand uh, journalists and editors in the newsroom. By the time I left, it was down to five or six hundred or so. But now it's coming back because uh, Jeff Bezos has been investing money in the paper. 
uh, my friends say that no one has asked them anymore about how much it costs to do a story. Um, when I was, uh, I was last in Beijing, and, and for the Washington Post was my last for, uh, job before I left. And before, if I wanted to go to cover a story, I wanted to go to Wukan, uh, for example, if you remember the incident mm -hmm. in Wukan. And the first question was, well, how much is it going to cost you to go there? Well, how much is the flight, et cetera? You know, how much is it going to cost to stay in a hotel? So I never went. Um, but now, you know, there's no question about how much things cost because the paper, first of all, uh, Jeff Bezos made it a private paper, so it no longer has stockholders. So you don't have to worry about the, the quarterly, um, every, every three month earnings reports that have to be reported. And, uh, and uh, as a private company, he's just able to invest in it and give the paper time to figure out what to do. Now, the relevance, what's relevant, I think, to Hong Kong is some people have been questioning uh, Jack Ma's purchase of the South China Morning Post, but I put it in that same category. You have someone who's so wealthy that he doesn't need to worry about whether the paper is making money. So I know there are questions about the, uh, the content, <laughs> whether it might be the editorial content might be too pro-China or might uh, benefit Alibaba's business interests. But on the other hand, having someone with those kind of deep pockets who's wealthy enough to support the paper for the long term without worrying about how much money it makes year to year could be a good thing for journalists. And like the Washington Post now is starting to add new people and open new bureaus. So I see now South China Morning Post is opening new offices, adding new people. They just hired Juliana Liu from the BBC. They're hiring good people. So, you know, I, I'm giving it this kind of wait and see attitude. This could be this new era where these very wealthy internet businessmen who have made billions are now investing in media. That could be a good thing for the media. Uh 唯一就是说要靠广告的收入来支撑这份报纸 即是说在一个internet的世界里面,platform是一个独一无二的东西 吸引读者已经是说他的读者不需要给钱来买你自己的content 所謂的readership So we've talked about uh, uh, changes, corporate changes, changes in the business models for media, and changes in the character of consumers of media. So has this been good for Hong Kong, bad for Hong Kong, neutral for Hong Kong, uh, in terms of journalistic uh, coverage? Let me start with Billy. Do you 
有好大嘅轉變或者或者唔同噶啦。但係對於我嚟講咧，我又未必係十分體會得到嘅呢樣嘢。我只能夠係誒、呃、應該咁樣講。呢樣嘢嘅轉變咧，對於我嘅工作係未必有好大嘅影響。但如果作為一個、呃、普通嘅市民去睇嘅話咧，咁呢個一定係會有好大嘅轉變啊，好大嘅唔同。我諗大家都會感受到嘅呢樣嘢。我自己行裏面嚟講，如果你話喺誒九七之前、九七之後啦，嗰、那個做股仔嘅嘅嘅嘅轉變啦，我覺得即我入行嘅時候，一九七九年啦。其實嗰、那個即係香港政府咧，係一個好小型嘅政府嚟。嗰、那個 government directory 咧係薄薄一個咁樣樣嘅嘢。而家咧已經即係好大塔，或者甚至係即係好多好多個,個,個部門啦、嗯。我自己覺得香港政府當時對我我哋作為一個記者嚟講咧，最大嘅障礙咧就係、是、我哋 access 去 information 嗰度咧係好困難。即係話咧，佢往往同你即係耍太極，呢樣嘢由頭到尾即係。即係都係咁，我記得誒喺一九八三年度啦，應該要 Melko 佢哋去英國嘅、呃、Parliament 去游説，即係中線佢哋去游説，即係將談判啊啲咁嘅嘢受啦。係嗰陣時開始，香港政府係每日有兩個 briefing， 以前咧有十萬九唔應，咁但係咧佢嗰陣時開始咧，佢懂得咩叫 progressive PR 啦，就係朝頭早一個 briefing， 夜晚一個 briefing。即係佢要咧，係好主動咁樣俾曬呢啲呢啲呢呢啲嘢嚟。咁到九七之後，其實喺香港政府嘅角色裏邊嚟講咧，其實我自己就話，好似喺新聞自由，佢哋冇乜一個大嘅，即係即係唔俾你寫呢樣，唔俾你寫嗰樣，仍仍然係呢個法律係一個咩？咁反而我係睇到咧，係由於報紙始終都係一個雙型嘅嘅機構，係嗰個老闆本身。即係佢自己本身嘅考慮咧，係影響咗一啲誒、呃，即係報紙採訪新聞嘅時候，啲一啲一啲嘅嘅嘅方向一啲咁嘅咁嘅路線，係多於係一個好 systematic 喺即係政府或者係一啲嘅嘅層面裏邊嚟做呢樣嘢。我唔知其他其他行家會覺得，或者其他人會覺得點樣樣？Let me throw this to Billy Ann to Sukon.、Um, uh, Billy Still,、uh, Sukon, before you were creating content, you were offering content to media organizations. You know, Billy, as you say, as you yourself say, a lot of your work is political.、Uh, your work right now is is pretty political.、Uh, what's in the exhibition hall last year? You were a finalist、uh, as well. And that had to do with、uh, the human rights of minorities uh, 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 in Hong Kong.、Uh, Sukon, your your work.、Um, uh, can we can we see the work? Can we see Billy's work and Sukon's work?、Um, uh, this year, as a finalist, is you've been using sort of news stories about public figures, but it is about uh, uh, all those are senior public officials, and you've woven that into into these these flower petals.、Um, So th- it's it's also pretty political work. Is there a market for your work,、uh, Sukhan? You're now a gatekeeper、uh, of content.、Uh, um, is that kind of content、uh, popular, needed, or frowned upon? Wh- whoever either of you wants to go first. I think there is someone who wants to see it. So if we are creating, so as作為一個攝影師，我哋製造呢啲內容出嚟咧，誒、呃、係會有外國媒體想去睇究竟香港發生緊咩事嘅，或者係台灣嘅媒體或者大陸嘅媒體都都好想去了解誒、呃、香港發生咩事。舉個例子就係話誒誒年初年初一喺旺角嘅嘅事件啦。其實呢，呃、我嗰陣時又去現場參與啦，影咗嗰啲相呢，竟然係會有《華爾街日報》去登到頭版嘅喎。咁呢個可能證明咗一啲嘢嗱，《華爾街日報》嘅亞洲版，佢哋嘅目標讀者係咩呢？佢放呢張相入去呢個頭版呢，其實我我認為呢，其實有佢哋嘅考慮喺度嘅。
咁呢個係其中一樣嘢啦。第二個咧就係、是呃、自從自從我做做攝影記者以嚟咧、呃，不斷會有大陸嘅媒體咧去揾我，去想多了解一啲喺香港嘅大陸人究竟佢哋生活係點樣嘅啦咩？誒、呃，舉個例子，喺北京嘅話，佢哋叫北漂啦，即係由唔同中國唔同地方去到北京做嘢嘅一班人，佢叫北漂。喺香港咧，佢哋叫做港漂。咁呢班人。其實係響、呃、大陸過嚟香港做誒、呃、從事唔同嘅行業啦，做誒做唔同嘅嘢啦。呢樣呢個身份咧，其實喺中國政府嚟講，或者係中國誒唔、呃、同嘅階層嘅人嚟講咧，佢哋都好誒、呃、有感興趣嘅。佢哋感興趣包括係誒、呃、可能出於獵奇啦、好奇啦，或者佢喺度諗緊究竟誒按、呃、香港有冇另外一個出路咧？呢、這個係誒誒。呃呃網民或者即係大陸網民或者大陸讀者係感興趣嘅嘢，而呢樣嘢咧，正正就係因為佢感興趣，咁又變咗有好多媒體咧，或者好多唔同嘅誒、呃、編輯咧，會喺度揾香港或者悲傷港嘅攝影師去誒誒影一啲相關嘅題材嘅嘢。誒，蘇蘇光 ，what what what about yourself? How do you do you see if coverage Um, of public affairs has changed uh, 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 or not, and if it has changed, in what ways? Actually, uh, is because I am in the news department. Then, actually, we cover some, uh, uh, for example, as a reporter, work is actually. 係有一個 photo editor 啦，即係安排嘅，即係其實我哋冇得揀嘅，即係影乜嘢或者影咩內容或者影邊個人都冇得揀嘅。誒、嗯，即係唔同自由攝影師咁可以有一個誒，即係自己可能有啲喜歡嘅題材，自己特別有得可以有得發揮。咁我哋係接 order， 譬如一日四單、五單或者六單、七單咁樣啦。咁同埋係都係跟住一啲誒個安排咧，都係跟住可能都係誒。呃跟住一啲時間，或者跟住一啲地點，或者唔同嘅 pass con 咁樣去嘅，所以其實誒個嗰個角色係比較被動好多嘅，即係誒冇得話誒、呃，我好想誒、呃、特別跟邊單新聞，或者長期我跟邊單新聞咁樣嘅，咁所以係咁<笑>樣咯，即係嗯，即係同誒個分別就係咁樣。Keith Casey was talking about.、Um... Uh, social media uh, uh, and the digital world, and how uh, individual consumers, in, in in many ways, are their own platforms. Um, how do you see, uh, basically, uh, the internet and the digital age has been disruptive to media? How do you see the pros and cons of that? And if we can start also a discussion of fake news, I know your department has done a lot of research. Um, on the proliferation of fake news and how to uh, educate uh, uh, content consumers uh, uh, about that. So could you address those two parts uh, um, uh, in response to what has been said earlier? Yeah, it, it's, you know, it's, it's fascinating. It's, uh, it's, it's clear that the digital revolution has disrupted media the way it's disrupted almost every other industry in the world. I mean, when you think about it, You know, a lot of these companies didn't exist 20 years ago, and now they're the largest companies on the <laughs> New York Stock Exchange. The largest bookseller in the world, Amazon, doesn't own a single bookstore. You know, the, the largest renter of bedrooms in the world doesn't own a single hotel, Airbnb. The largest, you know, the largest, you know, fleet of taxis in the world doesn't own a single cab, which is Uber. And so it makes sense that the largest distributors of news in the world don't actually produce any news. That's Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> More news is consumed on Facebook and Twitter than the New York Times and Washington Post websites combined, by far. And so, uh, you know, these new platforms, which didn't even exist, you know, a few years ago, are now dominating the news discussion. So it's been incredibly disruptive for the old business model of newspapers, primarily, and television and radio as well, which was to sell advertisements, which would, which then supported the news gathering operations. But when they the The advertising has collapsed. It's moved on to the internet now, and nobody's figured out yet a, a new business model to replace that. So it's been incredibly disruptive. Now, in terms of the consumer, 
you know, all of you guys who follow news, um, because you're here on a Sunday, uh, you have more information at your fingertips than, you know, generations have ever had before. I mean, you've got more information just here in your pocket uh, than anyone ever had in the history of the universe. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's all good information. It doesn't necessarily mean it's all accurate information. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you know how to sort through. You don't know, you know how to decide what of this information is real, what's not real, etc. The, you know, I still, I'm one of the old, only people probably left in Hong Kong that still actually buys print newspapers. Every morning when I go to my office, I have a Washington Post and a Wall Street Journal and a Financial Times and a South China Morning Post stacked up on my desk and I still read them. I look at them. And one of the reasons I do that is because when I get my news on this thing, as most of you guys do, it's hard for me to tell what's important, what not, what's not important, because they change the stories around on the homepage. So one time a story that's not really that important, it suddenly becomes the top story on the homepage, and then, then an hour later it's gone, and another story is the top story on the homepage. So every hour it's changing, whereas, uh, you know, I've worked in those news conferences, those news meetings in Washington, D.C., and a lot of thought goes into what is the top story to go in that newspaper. What's the second story? What's the story that's on the front page but below the top half of the front page? A lot of, a lot of decision goes into that, whereas there's not a lot of decision that goes, that goes into putting a story onto this home page that you're reading on your phone. And so you've had editors that used to sort through these things. The other problem, the other problem with getting news off of your Twitter feed or your Facebook news feed is most of those are stories that your friends have put up there or the people who you follow have decided are interesting stories. The beauty, the, the kind of joy I get out of reading a newspaper, you know, I, take, I go to lunch and I carry these newspapers with me and I eat my lunch alone and I read through them, is you always find something you didn't expect to interest you. Or you see something that's exciting about a photograph or a headline that makes you read a story that you may not have been interested in, but it draws you in somehow. Whereas when you, the, the way we're consuming news now, the way you all are consuming news, I'm sure, is that you can pre-select the things that you're interested in. I'm interested in Hong Kong politics. I'm interested in you know, the British Premier League. I'm interested in whatever movies. And you only get those things that you're interested in. But there are some things that maybe you should read that you're not interested in, but they're important for you because they affect you or they'll make you a better and more informed citizen. So although I think we all have, all of you have more information now than ever before, I don't necessarily think that you're better informed than you ever were before. And that's a key distinction. The Hong Kong Journalists Association and also some international bodies have downgraded the level of press freedom in Hong Kong in recent years and see this as a, as a trend. Um, do you agree, uh, Casey? Mm, I'll first talk a little bit about the impact of the internet. Before, if you buy a newspaper, a newspaper, the character of the newspaper is usually from the front page. But today, in the digital world, in the internet world, in the internet world, in the Data 另外說回那個所謂Press Freedom這件事 我不覺得在香港在這個所謂Press Freedom那裏是有一個很大的危機 
個編輯，然後可能個 news editor， 然後跟住老總啊，其實一層一層嘅，一開始嗰個運作模式已經係咁樣樣嘅嘅嘅 sensor， 只不過就係話呢一種所謂 sensor 呢、这個呢、这個呢、这個過濾嘅嘅嘢咧，你可以稱之為一個 safe 格，一個一個一個失一個保障一個守門口啊。譬如 check finding 啊呢啲咁樣，但另一個咧就係話你用一個乜嘢嘅準則嚟去做一個呢啲咁嘅判斷，呢、這個先至係一個係一個政治嘅準則，係一個誒、呃、廣告商考慮嘅嘅嘅準則，係嘛？即係呢個先至係一個，我覺得係喺每一份報紙裏邊佢哋要自己每個媒體裏邊自己要面對一個咁嘅咁嘅問題。咁誒、呃，以前嘅嘅嘅報紙裏邊咧，係因為佢比較多唔同嘅 title， 唔同嘅嘅報紙，所以咧佢哋係會有個 competition 係比較明顯嘅，即係你個 choices 都仍然係多。咁但係今日嚟講，似乎嘅 choices 係越嚟越嚟越少嘅時候啦。其實誒、呃，我諗呢方面係對於嗰、那個誒。呃傳媒或者係心靈工作者第一線嗰度嗰個嗰、那個影響，即係會係會係大嘅。咁呢個壓力我諗往往係嚟自於嗰個 owner 本身，即係話個報紙因為始終一個商業嘅行徑啦。咁我自己唔 believe 有一個所謂誒編採絕對自由呢樣嘢嘅，等於我唔信即係誒大公嘅老總會可以啊、呃、蘋果會請或者蘋果會請大公嘅老總，即係即係。唔一定係佢係因為呢個報紙佢自己本身嗰個價值觀而去揾佢哋嗰個 editorial build up 嘅 editorial team， 所以喺呢方面咧係係一個我者係覺得係一個誒、呃、有誒、呃、商業嘅一個因素嘅考慮，有好多嗰個老闆本身嘅一啲一啲所謂弱制喺度，咁但係正如係話。每一行裏面咧，我哋都有佢哋嘅一啲誒商，即係職業嘅操守我哋稱之為，即係你當然啦，你、呃、做賣麵包咁樣，你當然可以，你可以賣西餅，你可以賣中式嘅麵包，但係你有一個準則嘅，就係、是、話你起碼嗰啲嘢咧食咗落去，我唔會令我肚痛先啦。你係唔會即係誒、呃、將一啲過期嘅麵包抌上嚟先啦。咁即係每一行業裏面咧，你當然做媒體，你都可以係一個生意。但係呢個生意咧，都有一啲約束或者一啲一啲你自己嘅嘅嘅要求喺度嘅呢個行業嘅要求嚇。咁、啊、我只係咁樣睇呢一個問題咯。In a way that that probably we've been talking a lot about change, and in that way maybe there hasn't been that much change、uh, in terms of you know、uh, it's the owner who decides. What goes in and what doesn't go in. I mean, in the old days, if you look, if you look at the South China Morning Post, correct me if I'm wrong, but when it was owned, owned partly owned by HSBC, which wasn't called HSBC at the time, you probably wouldn't find a negative story about HSBC in the paper. When it was owned by Murdoch, you probably then wouldn't find a negative story on News Corp, um, uh, Murdoch's company. And now that it is owned by Jack Ma, maybe maybe you will not find a negative story about Alibaba uh, uh, in the paper.、Um, Billy and、uh, and Sugon, as as sort of practitioners in the field uh, uh, for some time, do you find、uh, do you think、um, uh, press freedoms have tightened in 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 Hong Kong, or、uh, media are exercising more self censorship, as Casey、uh, says, is a factor? I I think is like that. If we talk about, um. 講每一層，即係如果每一層都一個誒、呃、所謂嘅自我審查喺度嘅話咧，應該係要細分佢。即係作為一個攝影記者咧，我我自己嘅工作方法，我點樣去篩照片咧？唔係因為政治立場，唔係因為經濟因素，而係因為我嗰張相影影到我想表達嘅嘢，或者影得好唔好。咁呢、這個誒、呃，即係當然我唔係一個媒。媒體入面嘅攝影師啦，我唔知佢哋究竟實質係咪會咁樣做，或者一個 editor 佢係咪會咁樣採取嘅行動？誒、呃、唔清楚，咁我淨係講我自己嘅工作方法，應該係誒、呃、我嘅工作方法就係我啱啱講嘅，誒淨係認為張相影得好唔好，作為一個指標
。咁我亦都唔認為咧，誒、嗯、誒、呃，如果一個報紙採取經濟立場或者採取政，即係應該咁樣講，尤其喺香港，我認為誒、呃、經濟嘅立場同政治立場應該係分唔開嘅。佢哋入面有大部分咧係有牽連埋一齊嘅，所以唔應該單獨去講，佢應該係即係唔應該單獨去討論一份報紙係咪純粹地因為經濟立場，或者純粹地因為政治立場而出佢嘅報導。咁誒，呢、呃這個我睇法。呃、我咧就、呃、譬如、呃、我做編輯工作嗰時咧，譬如、呃、編一篇、呃呃、新聞咁樣啦。咁、呃、我哋通常都會買咗一版，然之後起埋一齊擺曬啲相落去啦。咁其實我係編輯係第一層工作嚟嘅。咁、呃、然之後咧又有,、呃、有一審啊，有記者啊，有二審啊，再有誒即係助理總編輯啊，然簽簽嗰版嘢嘅。即其實好多人層嘅人會睇嘅。咁我見到佢哋起題，譬如大有大標題，有細標題，有分題咁樣啦。咁我見到佢哋嘅取向都係盡量攞個平衡嘅，即係譬如一單新聞一定有人反對，一定有人支持噶。咁可能條條大題可能係誒、呃、正嗰陣時，然之後咧條細題要講翻一啲另外一啲人嘅聲音，即係盡量攞個平衡咯。我見到係，即係唔會話誒、呃、偏埋一邊咁樣咯。即係我嗰我嗰、那個誒誒、呃呃、經驗就係咁樣咯。So, can you can you tell us a little bit of, about why you presented uh, you you your work is done um, you know has uh, has newsprint in it involves public of, uh, officials on political topics but you did it in the form of these flowers what was your thinking about that why did you want to come uh, present your work in this sort of way which is which is a combination of journalism and art. 呃、其實我係誒誒啱啱誒轉做編輯嗰陣時咧，就誒日日誒第一第一件事咧就係、是、翻公司就係攞呢個報紙睇啦。咁日日都見一見，大約誒、呃、有啲咩新聞啦。因為今日嘅新聞同聽日新聞或者同後日新聞可能有連貫性，即係唔可以誒甩咗少少嘅嘢。咁誒咁睇睇報紙嘅時候就。嗰、那個靈感就係嚟自睇報紙，誒、呃，然之後睇完就成首都油墨，所以起咗個題叫花尖油墨咁樣嘅。咁誒，咁、呃、其實誒、呃，我個嗰陣時誒個、呃、感覺就係覺得誒、呃，因為之前嗰五年咧，香港比較灰暗，咁然之後咧，我就覺得誒、呃、開始可以有個轉機，可以可以誒、呃、有一屆新嘅特首誒、呃、出嚟參選啊，或者有好多候選人出嚟。誒睇報紙嗰時有好多嗰啲誒唔同嘅政綱啊，咁好多人出嚟，好好似想改變香港咁樣咯，咁就開始覺得啊有轉機、呃、有一個、呃、新嘅、呃、特首嘅過渡啊咁樣咯，咁誒點樣整翻就係、是呃、我都係都係係係即係可能覺得開始有少少希望或者有啲曙光咯，咁咁就將誒、呃，譬如二月開始嗰啲誒選舉工程啊、活動啊，咁誒誒嗰啲報紙就留曬落嚟，咁然之後就誒、呃、整咗朵花，咁樣然之後去到 keep 到去七月咯，即係大約做咗幾個月嘅時間咁樣。Let's uh, uh, open up to the floor. Uh, we'll take questions uh, uh, from the floor. Uh, uh, if you have something you want to ask, you can ask a particular panelist, or you can ask the group as a whole. Um, just raise your hand, and uh, someone will come with a microphone for you. Anyone? Thank you for the discussion just now. Uh, I would like to go deeper in the in the question that posed by uh, you about the moderator uh, about uh, the change of the freedom of the press. Because I'm not working in the press at all. I'm just an ordinary citizen. From the outside, I really can see there seems to be some kind of restriction in the freedom of the press. I'm not sure if it's about really from the political side or 
as some of the panel members have shared, is more to do about the business consideration or the decisions, I should say. But I, what I can see is because there are more uh, investors from across the border that are coming into part to share part of the Hong Kong media. And by media, I'm actually referring not only to the printed newspaper, the press, but actually the overall, including maybe the radio and the television. So my, as an ordinary citizen, I, I'm not sure if it's, uh, I'm glad that we still have different voices in media, working uh, in the media industry, so that as a viewer, uh, we have more options to view different... I, I'm not trusting any of the media completely. So we, we have to read or watch different media in order to make our sensible decision uh, to, like, to have a full picture of every uh, story of our city or of the world at, in general. Uh, my question is I would like to ask any of the panel or all, uh, can you just share with us how we can because today's topic is about the transition. Uh, it appears to me that uh, the discussion just now is like the overall, we touch upon something, but can, can we just uh, can you share with us more about Hong Kong in particular in, the, in this position uh, in relation to China, not only China, because I think the APEC region in general is undergoing a lot of changes in recent five years or a decade. So I would like to see how the media in Hong Kong actually has um, evolved in terms of reporting uh, on the news. Uh, it could be something to do with the restriction in the press, because I, what I can see as a viewer is uh, there is maybe, there are more and more independent of crowdfunded press, which touches on really brave topics of the story, but I'm talking about those like mainstream media. It appears to me that there's a certain topics they're trying to not to go deep or to avoid reporting. So I'm not sure if it's really uh, to do with the political side of the restriction of the freedom of press or it's actually somehow to do with the changes in the region overall. So, 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 so I, I would like to as, as you, every one of you is working in the industry, what, what is your, your take on the change? So specific, mm. uh, sp specific examples perhaps, or we have, we have one person, at least one person here whose perception is that uh, she is not, she feels she's not seeing enough diverse coverage or perhaps coverage across the spectrum. Uh, is, is that the case? Would like to take it on. Can I give a shot? Hey, or? Keith. I'll, I'll just give you my impression um, because I lived here for five years in Hong Kong from uh, 1995 until 2000, and I've been tr I was traveling into Hong Kong before that in the late 1980s quite a bit, and I thought the all the press, the local press, um, was incredibly aggressive in covering China. Then, if you wanted to know what was going on in China, you read the Hong Kong papers then because they were really, really digging deep and telling you what was going on. And they had really good reporters covering China at the time. I'm thinking uh, the names that come off the top of my head like Jasper Becker, who wrote a book that mm. uncovered Mao's great famine that he caused. Mao caused a famine. And Jasper Becker's book, Hungry Ghosts, um, you know, detailed that. And it was, you know, excerpted in the South China Morning Post. Uh, you know, South China Morning Post was where you let it, we've learned about labor unrest and strikes going on and unrest going on in China. And they did deep investigative reports with good correspondents who would co you know, travel into China, both Chinese and expat um, correspondents. So although today I see very dutiful coverage from all the papers and on TV about what's happening in the party Congress and covering news in China, I don't see that kind of in-depth you know, going behind the scenes and telling me what's happening in society in China um, the way I would like to see it. Um, uh, you know, it's, uh, the papers now don't seem that indispensable. Before, if you wanted to know about China, you had to read the local Hong Kong newspapers to find out what was going on. Um, partly that's because now Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Bloomberg, they have such big bureaus in China, Reuters, and they're doing such a good job covering China that the local Hong Kong papers, to me, look like they're failing. Um, by comparison to even keep up with these foreign news bureaus that seem to be a bit more aggressive about things. So, uh, you know, I, 
you know, I don't know why that is exactly. And again, I'm not talking about just covering the daily, you know, what, you know, what Xi Jinping said yesterday. All the papers cover that. I'm talking about going in depth. And some of these stories I know are out there and are doable because some of my students do them. You know, I, I do, I, I teach a feature writing class and some of the stories they come back with, you know, that they can do just by making WeChat phone calls in. Some of the stories that places like Quartz, uh, the new website Quartz is doing are really, really interesting and really detailed. And you know, I'm saying, why am I reading this in courts and not reading this in the local Hong Kong press? So to me, it's not a matter of just covering the news. It's kind of that aggressive digging and telling me what's behind the news. Um, 在報館一直接收到單就收了如果在香港如果一個月是越是不公平的社會應該是越多故事越多越是多這個新聞記者可以發揮自己的能力的機會香港是很公平的社會嗎越來越多只是一些指定動作的文章Well, I have a linked question to that is about business model. So we hear that um, perhaps one of the biggest influence or threat to freedom of press actually comes from um, ownership. And we also talk about in order to do more investigative stories or more diverse stories, you also need to have um, money. Um, so we see in recent years there's um, a lot of um, independent media, online media, um, HK01, uh, or even being Hong Kong. Um, there are a lot of experiments in Hong Kong. Have we found a good um, business model in Hong Kong that could support independent media? And I think around the world, we also see more uh, money, say, uh, discussion about like philanthropy going into uh, media. Um, what's, what are your views on that? Or, or any other suggestions on how we can uh, support independent media? Thanks. 全部是一件很貴的事 呃,找原因啦。佢可能有個報告,有個committee找個原因啦,last一年啦,兩年啦,一路咁樣跟啦。其實一個好花,好花時間嘅嘢。如果你今日睇當然有,即係我都見到好開心會有一啲independent
。如果你要一個 business model， 你就唔係做一個 media 喺香港，我講你咪做一個 media， 你係做一個 internet company，internet 嘅 corporate， 即係話你係做一個 Facebook， 你係做一個騰訊。你唔喺香港，你仍然唔可以做到一個、呃、Washington Post， 即呢個係一個，即我自己會覺得係一個好難嘅嘅嘢。因為如果你解決兩樣嘢啦，如果喺一個 media 裏面，佢得兩個方法揾到錢嘅啫。喺過去，一個就係靠個 circulation， 一個又係靠佢個廣告。後面有 N 咁多個支出嘅，咁喺。如果我哋諗今日嘅 business model 裏面嚟講呢，如果你睇返誒傳統嘅報紙 ，even 係蘋果又好，或者其他嘅媒體都好啦，一啲 establish 咗嘅嘅報紙啦，佢哋其實如果淨係睇呢一樣嘢啦，佢哋係揾唔到出路，因為好簡單，如果你話淨係揾 advertiser， 就等於而家呢，有五十張凳，有五千個人去爭，因為好多。即係誒誒誒人以前咧，你要開即係 start 一個媒體咧，可能你係需要好大嘅即係投資啊。但係而家其實好多個渠道，咁而且啲五十張椅咧都仲係假嘅，因為有三十張咧已經係俾嗰啲即係最 top 嘅壓咗㗎啦。Facebook、Google 壓曬，其實你係講緊五千個人爭緊二十張椅，呢個一個好好好好好好好難嘅 situation。咁一個好 personal 嘅原因啦，我做咗三年之後，當然即係你會見到個 page view 每日哇有三百萬、四百萬嘅 page view， 有少少虛幻，<笑>有少少虛幻。咁而我又覺得、呃、好似因為讀者要睇嘅嘢係未必一定係你會覺得係最重要嘅嘢，就呢個而家咪今日嘅 media。但係如果你要係做一個 corporate， 你係以一個誒、啊、攞你足夠嘅 reader 或者係足夠嘅 follower， 我哋叫做嚇，唔係叫 reader， 而係 follower follow 你嘅時候咧，你揾錢嘅方式可能係賣嘢、賣戲飛、打賞，即係呢啲咁樣所有嘅，甚至係做電子錢幣，係呢啲咁嘅 model， 係騰訊做緊嘅嘢，而唔係只可以你守翻喺個 media 嗰度啦。咁另一方面，我自己就會覺得喺一個 internet 嘅世界裏面，當然有好多外國我哋可以睇見啦，一啲 in depth 嘅報導呢，仍然可以喺網上去活閱讀。但係網上閱讀嘅環境，始終係未必俾到一個呢，係好多面嘅一一樣嘢。咁我覺得後生嘅，你哋可以當然可以擁抱呢個 internet 啦。但係我哋嗰啲已經走咗咁大段路啦，已經嗰頭近嘅人嚟講啦。即係我諗，姊妹喺我有生之年都未必會即刻完晒嘅咁。咁我就寧願去走貨一個一個，調返轉頭走返去一個 print 咁嘅咁嘅咁嘅環境。因為特別我覺得喺香港嘅今日呢，其實個問題唔在於係佢冇咗，佢唔係嗰個嗰、那個即係、就是、人哋俾你嗰一個所謂 press freedom 嗰、那個嗰、那個自由嘅嘅鏈住你。而係我哋冇咗自己嗰個主體性喺度，冇咗自己明白香港作為一個地方咧，我哋乜嘢係我哋？我哋自己 identity 係乜嘢？即係我哋點？我哋有啲乜嘢嘢係能夠企得出嚟話呢個就呢、這個就係香港？但如果你冇咗呢種主體性嘅時候咧，無論外面嘅力幾大都好啦，你漸漸你係其實冇咗，即係好迷失嘅。人哋話一打一路咁，你咪一打一路咯。人哋話大灣區，你就大灣區咯。咁大灣區係乜先得㗎？香港喺大灣區裏面係絕應該可以扮演咩角色？我覺得係需要一啲好深入嘅思考。如果好深入嘅思考，誒、呃、係需要 look back 睇翻我哋點樣走過嚟。香港係一路從七十年代、八十年代，甚至喺九十年代，我哋有好嘅，即、就、係、是、媒體一樣，我哋點樣走過嚟啊？點解我哋以前有啲好嘅報導，今日我哋竟然冇咗啲好嘅報導？即係我哋係要 look back 翻，然後再重新去思考，究竟今日我哋香港 position 應該會係點樣樣？咁呢個我自己 believe， 我做到報紙咪做報紙咯，做唔到報紙咪做週刊咯，週刊做唔到咪做月刊咯，月刊都唔得咪季刊咯，季刊都唔得咪出書咯。If that's a good story, 
咁咪咁咪要要做咯。呢、這個我係我自己個人嘅諗法。So that that actually seems to say a lot more about us as consumers, rather than let's say owners or business models or the social environment.、Um, if you are not willing to pay for quality content, you're not going to get it.、Um, uh, if you only want a certain kind of kind of content and only gravitate towards that, that's what you know. What are you going to get? You're going to get the media that you pay for, or you don't, or that you're interested in, or 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 you're not. There was a question here from uh, someone in the front row, please. And we'll be wrapping up、uh, fairly soon. 冇，最主要其實我都係想了解翻，即係大家講咗好多 internet 點樣去改變咗成個 industry 嗰個狀態啦。咁頭先大家都有講到就係話，哦，其實而家可能每個人自己都已經係一個 platform 啦。好多時候即係誒媒體點樣去選擇一啲誒 front page。嘅一啲故仔啊，已經好唔同啦，成咁我反而調翻轉就諗翻，咁而家有一樣嘢係同即係點樣擺頭條新聞嗰啲就似嘅就係、是、出 push， 即係每一個即係大家啲 media 可能有佢自己 application， 即係有啲嗰啲 app， 咁然後就出個 push。咁譬如話誒，我我個 concern 就係到底其實媒體其實喺你哋出一啲咁樣嘅即係出 push 嘅時候嘅嗰個取材誒。呃係唔係都會好影響到一嚟就係你哋自己本身所謂嘅報價啦，或者你哋代表咗一啲咩信念，或者你哋想推啲乜嘢類型嘅故仔？譬如、呃、我例子唔多啦，即係可能譬如龍生你自己做嘅香港零人，咁我自己有啲觀察，可能出到嚟嘅一啲 push 嘅故仔，其實未必係一啲真係話好深入嘅故仔。你多次就話其實香港冇好多故仔，咁其實我都有留意過香港零，其實都有啲深度啲嘅。報導嘅咁 ，which is 會唔會調翻轉？其實媒體好多時候就係話你哋睇咗好多數據，你覺得嗰啲人係會好，即係嗰啲故仔係好搶 hit rate 嘅，咁變相就用一啲可能一啲網上熱話或者一啲相對唔係咁深入嘅報導，咁就蓋過咗一啲真係相對出色啲嘅嘅嘅報導，即係有呢個情況。即係久而久之，甚至係會影響咗一啲誒、呃、讀者點樣去睇一啲新聞嘅機構，甚至佢哋點樣去。睇呢啲即係睇唔同嘅傳媒，因為你哋有講過話啊，好需要一啲即係有質素嘅讀者去去睇呢啲故事，但係個問題會唔會其實係新聞機構自己呢一啲嘅做法，反而就係養懶咗一啲讀者，或者令到讀者嘅習慣又已經唔同咗，甚至當你哋呢啲取材嘅方法係，頭先就話偏向啊，好多時候、呃、去到。已經係一個 corporate 嘅做法，而唔係當嗰間公司係一個 media， 會唔會即係呢啲咁樣嘅做法嘅時候，變相其實都係即係犧牲咗你哋所謂即係嗰種新聞嘅取材啊，或者嗰種道德啊等等咧 ？Well, that that touches a lot of points. Let's 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 make that the last thing to discuss as we are、uh, hitting our time limit.、Uh, Casey, very quickly, but we'll whip around everybody uh, uh, on that. But Casey first,、okay. since you are addressed directly. I agree with you. If the reporter is being paid for a PV, then it should be the PV that is being pushed. This is the right one. 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 雖然當然最理想嘅情況底下，好嘅新聞都係可以係收視好嘅新聞，但係大部分情況話俾你聽，我哋見到嘅咧就係誒係追住 PV， 咁呢個就係話你要一個取捨啦。呢、这個係一個你作為呢個媒體嘅 owner 本身，你個取捨會係會係點樣樣？亦都係話咧誒，你嘅其實即係 owner 有佢嘅角色啦，而每一個部門主管。佢自己本身亦都有佢自己嘅角色，佢點樣俾 assignment， 點樣俾 direction， 嗰啲嗰啲嗰啲嗰啲記者，呢、這個亦都係。咁我完全同意你對另一個個嗰個嗰個批評，就係、是、話我哋係好多特別係 push 嘅古仔啦，係係一啲豬食人，或者係呢啲呢啲比較 sensational 嘅一啲一啲咁嘅古仔。咁遲啲即係而家 big data 嘅發生咧，仲更加恐怖。就係話佢因應你自己嗰、那個、那個喜好，然後 push 一啲嘢俾你，所以係冇立場嘅
啊，冇乜特別嘅嘢。你總之你要邊樣，我就俾嗰樣，因為令到你咧係繼續去去去去去 kick 呢個 PV。呢個就係一個即係、就是、今日媒體面對嘅一個問題嚟。Well, it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation. Is it what you what you want the media to give to you, or is it what the media think that uh, 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 you you will be receptive to? Uh, so, Gon, any any thoughts about this? Uh, uh, is it the content that you're producing that is the problem? Well, actually, this character is quite painful because there are so many people. 好多層人去，即係譬如編採其實係分開嘅，誒記者啦，又誒採訪主任啦，然之後編輯啦，然之後又助理總編輯啦，即係其實編採分開嘅。所以其實我我誒點講咧，都係被我哋係好被動角色嚟嘅，即係始終有好好多層人喺上邊去決定落咩內容咯，就唔唔到我話事。但係我自己覺得嗰、那個。一個報紙實際上咧，老闆嘅意當意意志當然好重要，或者佢嘅睇法好重要啦。但係中層、上層嘅一啲即係編採，即係嗰啲嗰啲部門主管咧，佢哋負嘅責任係更加大嘅。其實係，即係因為如果你譬如話你只係希望你嘅部門係交數嘅，咁你咪逼嗰班嗰班同事去車衣咯。即係呢個就係其實一個一個新聞裏邊咧。一啲好嘅記者，往往一定要有一啲好嘅部門主管，能夠頂住老闆嘅意思，然後比較足夠嘅空間、足夠嘅資源，一啲記者去做佢哋嘅故仔。Billy, a quick thought? No.、Uh, Keith, we'll end with you. Huh? Well, get to close it off. <laughs> Let's look. You, you, you got to give us the cosmic uh, yeah, view. The cosmic huh? view. <laughs> I'll say this. Look, last week in the United States,、uh, they gave out the Pulitzer Prizes、um, to the best journalism of the last year.、Uh, the Washington Post won a couple of Pulitzer Prizes for a political story exposing an Alabama Senate candidate, and also for the Russia,、uh, the Trump-Russia connection. The New York Times shared that Pulitzer for national reporting. New York Times also won a Pulitzer Prize、uh, for reporting on the、uh, harassment of women in America that led to the Me Too movement.、Um, what all those Pulitzer Prizes and more、um, have in common is that those were teams of reporters working on those. Do, you know, dozens, dozens of reporters spending a year digging into those stories. Good journalism is not done overnight. Good journalism takes time. It takes money. And from my friends and colleagues who work in local media, Hong, you know, and and you know, maybe I don't know HKL One. I know South China Morning Post. I know some of the Chinese language papers. And no editor locally is going to let a reporter spend months working on one story. They want to know what are you going to do tomorrow? What are you doing? They they wouldn't even give an, a reporter a week to work on a story. They want them turning out maybe two stories a day. You can't do journalism that way. Good journalism takes time. It takes time, and it takes a boss who's willing to give you the time to dig up the story. And if you don't spend, if you spend six months looking at something and it's not there. They don't say, "Well, you're fired." They'll say, "Well, I'll look at something else." It takes time, and it, good journalism takes time, and it takes money,、um, and that's why those big papers that invest in their journalism are actually doing really well. And now the New York Times and the Washington Post—they actually have more page views and more readers coming to them now than ever before. There are these new sites around, like、uh, Hong Kong Free Press and some of the other internet sites. The problem is they're small staffs. They they just don't have the people. They don't have the bodies. They don't have the resources to put into really digging out. It can only be done by the big media outlets that have the money to do it, and that requires owners and bosses who are willing to give their reporters the time to do those stories.、Uh, and somebody earlier asked a question about the business model. What business model can sustain or support this kind of good in-depth journalism that's missing now?、Um, you know, it has to be either. Deep-pocketed owners who don't have any political connections or a political agenda—they just want good journalism. They just believe that journalism is important. The second business model that is working somewhere,、uh, somehow around the world, are what we call consortiums or groups of 
journalists going together. These, this is the kind of thing that exposed the Panama Papers and some of the other things where you have these international consortiums that are all working together on one project. And the other business model that seems to be working with uh, states in the US and elsewhere is the foundation model, uh, the nonprofit model, where nonprofit organizations or things like uh, things are they're being supported. They're supporting online journalism. They're supporting things like ProPublica, which is a new online site in the states that's supported by a very wealthy foundation that doesn't care about the end product and is not looking at how much money is coming back to me or how many hits I'm getting on my website. Those are the business models that are working. But you know, as much as I support new, you know, the new digital media and the new online sites, the, you know, they're just not big enough. They just don't have the the resources. They just don't have the staff to do this kind of in-depth reporting that we saw win Pulitzer Prizes last week. I know it sounds pessimistic, so sorry to end on a <laughs> pessimistic note. <laughs> well, thank you very much to everyone at the table. Thank you, uh, uh, all of you in the chairs, uh, uh, coming out here uh, uh, on a Sunday evening. Thank you to the Wing Foundation uh, for organizing all this.